Hello, I'm Jonah McTavish Slayton, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to take a look at Peerage, or The Peerage, um, which is an internet site, thepeerage.com. It is ran by an individual by the name of Daryl Lundy. Uh, Daryl Hells from Wellington, New Zealand. And he has been doing this for quite a while now. I remember years ago um, when this uh, site came online. And since then, he has added a ton of mostly peerage of nobility and royalty, um, different family lines and different um, individuals from Europe. So there's an extensive amount of uh, peerage or nobility from primarily Britain, England, Wales, Scotland, and Ireland, and other sections of Europe. So today, I wanted to look at a connection that I've made. Now, understand this, that this site and Daryl Lundy's work is with not without error. Now, there's this is... Uh, there will be errors. I've um, found some myself. There is um, some level of guesswork. Sometimes it's not entirely accurate, but he has always been, to anyone's request, um, when they bring enough evidence or they show the citations and the um, documentation, then he always has updated it to the correct form, and he's tried his best um, to make it accurate. Now, there's all kinds of different things, such as the, um, you know, Walden's, uh, I think it was Walden's, the Complete Peerage of England and Scotland and Ireland and Great Britain. Um, and then there was another one called the Complete Peerage. Um, several different people wrote um, these things over the years. And a lot of this information, because when you are of nobility, there is a big thing that goes with that, and that is inheritance. And so you really want your titles and all your land and your holdings to be yours. So you're going to keep a lot of documents proving what you own. Mm -hmm. And you're also going to um, make sure your, your family, your children, inherit this. So there's a lot of information. I mean, the most documented families uh, in the British Isles in Ireland are going to be those of royalty and nobility from the top of nobility all the way down to the baronets and lords and lords and so forth. So um, with that being said, um, most of us will have a few noblemen in our lines if you go back some closer, but most of us you go back about to the sixth to eighth great grandparent and you're going to run into a nobleman um, amongst these hundreds of great grandparents at that level. Um, and when you have that, you can then trace back because typically this is going to be a very low level, uh, probably some kind of knighted or sir or, or low level lord or uh, uh, landowner. And but they themselves typically come from a um, a much larger nobility based or much bigger title. Um, their grandfather or father even, or great-grandfather, was probably a full baron or an earl in most cases. And then as these earls have, or barons have more children, and sons typically inherit the, the wealth, the land, these, these land holdings become smaller. But typically, the oldest of each generation keeps the main title and the main land, such as the earl is passed down to the oldest son, the oldest son. But the younger sons on each of these branches become baron are barons, but not quite barons in most cases. They just become lords because of their father's title that their father inherited from their grandfather. So by the time you get down in today's age, say the 1700s, or 16, 1700s range, and you have a fourth, fifth, sixth great grandparent there, a lot of times you can find that between the 10th and sixth great grandparents, you will have someone, maybe, if you're, if you're um, in that category, you may have one that got directly leads to an earl or a, a baron during this time period. Typically, most of us don't, unless we belong to those families and still part of them today. Because this wealth entitlements cling but what happens is is that most of us we're from the, these lines where these are low level lords and 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 they're they're having a sliver of of the of the pie because they were the younger youngest son um with that being said i am kin to a johnston uh that is found in in, in scotland his name is john uh, james johnston 
and I trace him through some, uh, uh, you know, his daughter's line, and it goes down and marries into my line. Um, but this goes back to 1672 to a guy named James Johnston. He's the first Earl of Annandale in Hartfield. Now, this is, you know, most of us don't have, um, you know, this guy was born in 1625, died in 1672. And the connections there. So what I try to do with my tree and my genealogy is try to get the most accurate documents as possible because James Johnston is 100% verifiable, the first Earl of Annandale and Hartfelt. His family lines were well documented um, from his ancestors then on passing through his children and descendants. So one of his, uh, you know, like I said, his daughter married into a line that would eventually end up into my line and this means James Johnson, the first Earl of Annadale and Hartfield, is a great grandfather of mine. And he's, he was, like I said, he was born in 1625, died in 1672. So that's kind of a close great grandfather to have as an Earl. Um, you know, most of my, you know, and most everybody else's, and like, like I said, unless you wore a Johnston today and you're great-grandfather or great-great-grandfather was the son of this earl, then you're probably going to find that most of your connections to nobility, to earls and, and barons and sometimes dukes and royalty goes back. Typically, for the most of us, is in the 15 1400s where we start seeing this big expansion. And remember, all it takes is one, one person of nobility as a great-grandfather. Then you all of something, if you keep going back generations, you see that all of these earls and all of these barons... And then you got dukes and then more than likely royalty in your line. It's not anything rare because probably a third of us have um, a connection to a royal family um, at some point. Some of us in Ireland and Scotland, other people in, in England and, and, and even Wales. And sometimes it's, it's over in the mainland continent, uh, such as France or um, the German area or the Dan Danish kings. Because they all intermarried. So let's go back to this Earl, um, born in 1625, died in 1617, the first Earl of Annandale and Hartfield. Uh, he was the son of James Johnston, um, the first Earl of, um, of Hartfield. Uh, so this guy was not technically the first Earl of Hartfield, but he was the first Earl of Annandale and Hartfield. But his father was named James as, as well, and his, and his mother was Lady Margaret Douglas. And... You know, this 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 is a, um, that's his mother now. He himself would marry another Douglas by the name of uh, Lady Henrietta Douglas. Um, he succeeded as the second Lord Johnston of Lockwood. He succeeded as the second Earl of Hartfield in, in October 1653. So almost 20 years, you know, as the Earl taking his father's place. Um, he was fined uh, in 1654 uh, 2,000 pounds under Cromwell's Act of Inmenity. Um, so this guy, you know, has felt the wrath, at least his pocketbook, of Cromwell. Um, he was the uh, protectorate for County Dumfries between 1664 and 1656. Um, he resigned his Scottish titles um, at, a, at a certain point. Um and, you know, he had several, such as Lockwood, Moffatdale, Evandale. Um, so he held an office as a constable of Lochmaben Castle. And he was also the hereditary steward of Annandale in 1661. Um, you know, he petitioned to King Charles II for a recom uh, recompensation on account of the family suffering during that civil war. Um, and during this time, he was created the Earl of Ann uh, Annandale in Scotland. Um, he, this guy, like I said, he was uh, his eldest female without division, the heirs of males. So this, this is this is this is an Earl um, of of Scotland, and he's married to Lady Douglas. Now, we're I'm sorry, he was married to Lady uh, Henrietta Douglas. His mother was Margaret Douglas. So we're gonna go back. And the, the, the thing about this video is is we want to take this rabbit hole. Remember, it's not always 
a lot of the stuff, it, you know, you have to find the accuracy to land with this. And so this accuracy is through, um, this accuracy is through his son and on down through to his um, great granddaughter that married into my line. So we're looking at like my seventh great grandfather. Um, so there is, th th there's a, a cool connection here. So first of all, before I even want to go down this rabbit hole, I wanted to make sure that James Johnson is is, is verifiable with my great grandfather. So if I go by the paper trail, it, it, it points to that. And also, um, my autosomical DNA, even though there's a large distance between the sixth great grandfather or seventh great grandfather, the Johnston of, uh, of Scotland, there still seems to be a very high level of autosomical DNA still shared between my family and the Johnston's family today. Um, but so, according to the paper trail and documents, and not just going down a random list on Ancestry.com or Genie or Heritage, um, where people are just putting in anything that looks similar and similar names, there's actual real live documents showing that when these people had married and where they migrated and, and immigrated to. So, um, the James Johnson. This is the this is the other guy. This is the first James Johnston um, of the Earl of Hartfield. Um, he was the son of Sir James Johnston um, and Sarah Maxwell. Um, And he, you know, like I said, we talked about he had married Lady Margaret Douglas, and and she was, um, and we the first guy we talked about, which is my seventh great grandfather. When we were talking about him, we talked about his mother, Lady Margaret Douglas, and she was the daughter of William Douglas, first Earl of Queensbury, and then Lady Isabel Kerr. Now we're not going to go down all these lines, but as you can see, um, it, it starts spreading out to. You go back a couple of generations after you find your first Baron or, or Earl or even Sir Baronet, and then you start seeing this big massive spread. But the rabbit hole we're going down is going to be way deeper than just this later 16th, uh, 16th and 17th century nobility in um, Scotland. So we're going to go next to, he was the son of, like I said, Sir James, his father. So we have a James, James, James. And we get to we get to his father, Sir James, and he was the son of Sir James Johnson of Irk, and his mother was Margaret Scott. So he was um, he had actually held the the office of warden of the of the marches, um, and was in Wells. And there's actually a a town in Wells or a community in Wells that's named after him. But we're going back, we're going back further than that. Uh, he was the son of uh, James Johnston. The younger and Margaret Hamilton. Now Margaret Hamilton was this was um, from another lineage line that goes back to Earls. He married, like I said, Margaret Scott, um, and her father was Sir William Scott of Kirkhead. Uh, but we're going back. We're going to go back further, pretty further than this. Um, and the next one is going to be another. Uh, you know, this this James Johnston is. The younger, he was the son of Jane, John Johnston and Elizabeth Jardine. Stepping back further, we get a, an, another James Johnston. Um, you know, John Johnston was the son of another James Johnston and Mary Maxwell. Now, the Maxwells are um, an, another big and important family uh, in, in the lowlands of Scotland. So James Johnston's um, father was Sir Adam Johnston. He had married another Maxwell, Mary Maxwell, who was the daughter of John Maxwell III, Lord Maxwell, and Angus Stewart. Now this is where we get into the rabbit hole because all this is completely accurate. Um, there are many citations. There are the peerage uh, volumes that are found in 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 Britain and in Scotland. So now this is where we turn because. He married Mary Maxwell, who, who happens to be the daughter of Angus Stewart. So now we're going to get into this. We're jumping off the Johnston family line, and we're going to go to the, the Stewart line. Angus Stewart was the daughter of Sir Alexander Stewart III Agarlas and Elizabeth Douglas. Okay, So now we're going to go down this Stewart line. And, Stu and Alexander Stewart was the son of, of Sir William Stewart, and a and and a an Elizabeth. 
Um, and then we go back, and he, you know, William was the son of Sir John Stuart, the first of Adalswinton and Garlals. And he was also married to a Marion Stuart, probably way back distant cousin of his. So John was the um, son of Sir William Stuart and Eliz uh, Isabel Oliver. Now, Sir John Stuart um, died um, in somewhere around 1419, 1420. He was killed in action, um, but he fought at the Battle of Hunladen Hill in 1402. And during that battle, he was captured by the English, but did escape. He lived at um, Dalswinton in Dumfrieshire, Dumfrieshire, Scotland. Sir William Stuart. Um, he was the son of Alexander Stuart and Margaret Turnbull. Or, I'm sorry, Turnbull. Um, he died in 1402. Um, and... This was the same time as his son. So him and his son both died in 1402. Um, I'm sorry. He died in 1402. Um, and he was put to death by Sir Henry Hotspur after being captured by the English at the Battle of Hamilton Hill. So his son was captured and let go and then later killed in battle. You know, so when we're talking about um, John Stewart. But this guy was... Um, he was actually in the same battle with his son. He was actually captured by the famous English Sir Henry Hotspur um, at the Battle of Holland Hill, and he was executed. So he was the son, like I said, of Alexander Stewart. Now we're going to go to Alexander Stewart. Alexander Stewart was also the son of a Sir Alexander Stewart, and, um, and he had married Margaret Turnbull. We don't really know who his mother is, but... And then Sir Alexander Stewart was the son of Sir Alan Stewart. He lived in Darnley, Scotland. And then Sir Alan was the son of John, uh, Sir John Stewart. Um, and these he died um, in Halladon Hill, killed in action. Um, so a lot of these Stewarts would be killed in action in... We're going to get to this in a minute, but their their lineage was um, their lineage was fighting for um, the the Scottish um, throne and for Robert the Bruce. But so he was killed at Halidon Hill in Scotland in 1333. He was granted the lands of uh, Dreghorn and Ire for his services to Robert the Bruce. And he, like I said, he was a bunker. Um, then he, he was the son, um, of Alexander Stewart, the fourth high steward of Scotland. So this individual would be, um, the brother, um, of this, this guy, like I said, he was the son of the fourth high steward. So he would be the, the uncle of the high steward that married into the, the line of the either uncle or great uncle to the line that married into Robert Bruce's daughter, Marjorie. Um, so Sir John Stewart was the like son of Alexander Stewart, the fourth high steward of Scotland. And this is where, you know, he, this guy, would he fought in the Battle of Falkirk, uh, which took place in 1298. Now this is where, when we were talking about the rabbit hole, this is the whole purpose of the video, is to trace back from the Johnstons, which was one of my great-grandfathers, uh, we trace it all the way back until we found this mother line that was a great-grandmother in, in this line, which was Angus Stewart. And then now we're tracing these Stewarts up. Um, that, have, As you can tell, the last three or four that we've talked about have all uh, fought in battles against the English um, for the Scots and the Scottish kings. And... Several of them have died in battle, <clears throat> and one have been put to death so far. So now we're back to the, the Alexander IV, the High Steward of Scotland. This is a guy that really was the administrator, um, sort of prime minister for Scotland under the Scottish kings. And this is where the rabbit hole really has led us to, and that's to Jean McCory. 
Now, Jean McCrory is the daughter of James McCrory, Lord of Butte. And like I said, she would marry um, Alexander Stewart, the fourth, the fourth High Stewart of Scotland, who was the son of Walter Stewart, the third High Stewart, uh, Stewart of Scotland. But it brings us to this individual right here, James McCrory, Lord of Butte. So James McCory, Lord of Butte, was the son of Angus, Lord of Butte, and Iron. He died 1210 in Scotland, killed by the men of Skye, along with his father and two brothers. So the importance about this is, is that there, the, 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 this guy is he's going to be killed with his father. So who is this James McCory and who is Angus, the Lord of Butte, and Iron? Then we get to this man. Angus was the son of Summerlid, there you have it, the Thane of Aragul, the Lord of the Isles, and by all definitions, the King of the Isles. Um, so that was his father. And he was killed by his brothers without a surviving male issue. Um, and then this female would marry into um, the line, the lineage of the stewards of Scotland, and eventually make their way down to my family. Um, so the, 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 he was killed by his brothers. Um, he inherited uh, Butte, Aaron, and uh, Gamaran, and then lost those to his brothers, Ragnall. So now we're down to this person, Summerlin, Thane of Argyll, King of the Isles. Um, you know, and Summerlin was married to Ra uh, Ragnhild, who was the daughter of Olaf Bitlin, the King of Man in the Isles. And Summerlin would die in Renfrey in Scotland, killed in action. Um, fighting against um, the same Scottish king that he was allied with. Um, he was considered King Summerlid of the Sudries or the, of the Southern Isles and recognized by the King of Norway. Um, but he fought in a campaign against Malcolm, King of Scotland, and he would lose his life in that battle. We really don't know why he would do this. I know there's some disputes uh, in the, the area of Galloway. Now, you know the Norse Gales came from the Hebrides and the west coast, particularly Argyll. But Galloway is also this, this Norse Gaelic culture there. And there he, he becomes involved in a dispute. He settles it. And perhaps even put his hit the guy that he supported um, as Thane or Lord of that area, uh, put him in control of that, and that probably didn't sit well with um, the King of Scotland. And so Malcolm the Fourth would probably retaliate, and then Summerlin would go into battle against him. And Summerlin was of of a good age; he he died at, at a very old age, and why he would put himself in that position when he had so much going for him and really there wasn't much left for him and perhaps he should have left that up to his sons and future generations to um, go at Malcolm. Uh, but he had Angus, that, you know, who was given um, Butte and Iron. He had Arachnaw, which was, uh, who would become the Lord of the Isles. Uh, and then he would have du Domnall, who was um, of the Nully and Lorne. And he had possibly some other sons and daughters, but those are the three main. Um, unfortunately, the the line of Angus would end with his sons all being killed and fighting against his brothers um, and his nephews. But Summer, Summerlin would be would lead to this great Norse gill um, because his, he, Summerlin himself was, was of a Norse descent coming from Ireland, probably some connections to the, the King of the Isles, maybe the um, all, all, um, dynasty, maybe um, the King of Dublin. But this is where the rabbit holes led us, through Jean McCory that, or McCory, that pulls us all the way down to Summerlin, which is fascinating. And his line would end, and we would only have descendants from Angus's line is through that daughter. Um, now, the other two main sons, like Ragnall and Domnall, would spring up many clans such as the McRannals, um and the O'Donnells, the MacDonalds, the MacDougals, all of them are, are these male lines that became clans, Norse Gaelic clans, um, as a descendant from Sutherland. Um, and to take a look at who he who he married and and that was um Olaf uh, the King of, of Isles. Um 
he Olaf, uh, the, not a lot is known about him, but we do know that he married a woman by the name of Eggersborg of Orkney. She was the daughter of Harkikin Pollison, the girl of Orkney. Um, he was actually born in the Orkney Islands, um, and he was the, the son of um, Paul, the, the Jarl of Orkney, and Hargison's daughter. And um, this guy would be, his, his, like I said, his son would be, um, or he would actually be, this, he was the son of Thorfinn, which was the first Earl of Cathness. Um, and if you go back further from that, then you would go to um, um, he was the son of Sigurd, the second Jarl of Orkney. And <clears throat> this is where it's kind of cool too. We talk about Thorfinn um, and he was the son of Thor his name is Thorfinn Sigurdsson. He was the son of Sigurdsson. Uh, but he was the first Earl of Akathnis and his father was the was the Jarl or Earl of Orkney. He went by the nickname of Thorfinn the Black, and and he would eventually become the Earl of uh, the Jarl of Orkney um, after his father died. And actually, the cool thing about this is is that he is the Malcolm the Second's grandson. So you know, if you go back to see who Sigurd's son is, um, he's the son of um, a man by the name of Haldivir. And then you go back further than that, you can go back to that he was married to the daughter of a king in Ireland, a Norse king in Ireland. But going back to um, this this guy right here, um, Sigurd, he was married to um, Donada, or Donada of Alba. And Donada of Alba was the, the, the daughter of Malcolm II, the king of Alba. And... And we look at we look at Malcolm, King of Alba. Now Malcolm was the king of Kenneth the Second, or king of, uh, of the king of Alba. Um, and he died at Glam uh, Glamis Castle in Angus. He was killed by his own kinsmen. Uh, he's actually buried on the Isle Alna in Ayrshire, in Scotland. Um, but going back to this lineage here of, of Summerland. And if the documentations are correct, we have this straight line. Now, we assume that he did have sons. Uh, you know, we, we assume that he, he did have sons, and those three main sons were Angus, Ragnar, and Domnall. And that Ragnar and Domnall's sons and, and kin would spread out and produce a vast families and clans. But Angus, unfortunately, would his, the line with him would end. But he did have this daughter by the name of um, that would marry. Um, well, I'm sorry, he had a, his son would have a daughter, so his granddaughter. And, the, and and here's here's the concern thing about this is is that many people believe that James is not really Angus's son, but he was Angus's grandson. And that his son was someone by the name of Rora, and that would where James Macora would get his name. And James wouldn't survive. You know, James would be killed along with his two brothers and his father, and the entire male line wiped out. But he did have a daughter, and that was Jean or Jane uh, Macora, and that would be married into the Stuart line, and and eventually that their um, granddaughter would marry into the Johnstone line, and that would come down into marry into my family's line. So it's fascinating. Um, you could do the math to go back how far, but I'm sure a, a lot of us with Scottish descent and maybe even some with Irish descent has um, Summerlin in their family tree. It's almost impossible or not, because if you have a true MacDougall, and as I do, um, and incredibly, this is not from the McDougal line, okay? I have a McDougal in my line that is actually the Summerlin um, DNA, Norse DNA, perfect match, uh, my great-grandmother. But 
that line goes straight back from the, the McDougal, McDougal, McDougals all the way to um, the grandson of Summerlin. So that's an easy pathway to trace to Summerlin, right? But this is a different, this was, that was on my grandfather, the McTavish side. And, you know, his grandmother was a McDougal and um, it, it goes right straight to um, the paper trail and even the DNA with that particular McDougal family goes straight back to the same half of the group as, as the Summerlin's clan's half of the group and as the son of, of you know, Domlaw or Ragnall. And so that's easy. But this one's on my father's side. And this is a different family line that goes up through the Johnstons um, that, that all, straight up through the Johnstons and then branches off with the, uh, Agnes Stewart, who was um, a great granddaughter of the... Um, our granddaughter of the third or fourth high steward of Scotland. And from there, uh, her great grandmother would be Jan McCrory, or actually her mother would be Jan McCrory, who would be the either the grandson or the great grandson of Summerlin. So what I like about peerage is you can trace down these peerage titles and nobilities, even from a very low level. But once again, you have to look at the sources. So most of everything has citations, and you know you can find most of that on on the the internet today. Go and look at it, read it, and and see how verifiable it is. But the hardest thing is not that because the peerage, um, this peerage site has been getting better each year, even though there's a lot of um, conjured things and, and speculations. So take some of the speculatives out of it then there's a lot of accurate because this is coming from real live documents that's been passed down for the last you know 600 800 years um but very fascinating if you have any nobility or low nobility in your family and you would like to um, research it more you can always reach out to me um, leave a comment on my channel and um i'm pretty sure i can dig into it and find it um, I've hit many a brick walls through the years on in my genealogy, um, but I've always been able to um, tr find out whether or not that brick wall, if someone comes along and adds that family line into it, like on Ancestry.com, which becomes a nightmare, or on Jenny, or Wicca, uh, Wicca family, or, or family search, um, heritage, um, you just got to take some of that with a grain of salt. There is some family lines that are verifiable, but with the ones that are not verifiable, you know, you hit the brick wall, and it's just better to let the brick wall stay um, whether than put up some speculative information that is not accurate, especially when it comes to coming into um, royal lines or coming into nobility lines, because we all hit brick walls because not all, not everybody, our grand grandparents or great great grandparents were of noble birth. So when you have that you can't trace their records because there's they don't exist. They, they didn't own tons of land. They didn't, they didn't have these prestige titles. So um, their, their families, their ancestors become a distance of the past. Sometimes you get lucky if, if these guys had some kind of tradition um, that was written down in Bibles or an oral tradition. But typically, once you hit you know the 1700s, 1600s, you start fading, and you're lucky if you can get it back that far. And then most of what we get past that is people um, of fame or people with nobility titles or people that own land and, and stretching it. Like I said, you, once you get past your um, third great-grandparents, it becomes very difficult to actually prove and actually get around brick walls. But every now and then you have some nice family lines that tie in, and you can um, stretch your family all the way back. And sometimes, you know, in my case, on two different... You know, on both sides of my family being able to trace lines to Robert the Bruce, primarily through the Campbells and through the Stuarts that ended up marrying into everybody. Then you have these Hamiltons, you have these Johnstons, you have these um, Gordons, you have these Douglases, you have these Montgomerys, you have all these these kind of these Norman Anglo Norman people that became. Um, Scottish nobles back in, you know, the, the late 1100s, early 1200s. And then they just married everybody. And that makes your family tree spread way out, which is very interesting. And, and um, if you like history and you like heritage and studying uh, ancestry, it makes for a great time.
you know. Um, but anyways, as always, you know, keep searching, keep researching, you know, go after the truth. Make sure you're being accurate in your family tree. Um, and you could go down some really nice rabbit hole. This rabbit hole took me from the Johnstons all the way through Angus Stewart and the High Stewart of Scotland, all the way up into James McElroy, who was the son our grandson of Angus McRory, who were all slaughtered by their brothers, who were absolutely the sons of the infamous King of the Isles, Lord of the Isles, Thane of Aragul, the one and only Summerlin. This is my great grandfather. Thanks for watching. I'm Jonah McTavish Slayton, and this is my channel.